It is currently endowed with. It's a loss to us because there are expertise that we need in Nigeria, but because of the Naira pool, at the dollar pool, sorry, Naira is the money in Nigeria, and we have just invited also to come and make our currency available to the world, but it's only within our territory. Uh, with the right mix of developed human and natural resources that it is currently endowed with, Nigeria's potentials on the international arena remains promising, the current financial recession notwithstanding. In fact, I want you to cast your mind at the map of Africa. You don't have one here. This is my conclusion, <coughs> that in fact, just as a profound scrutiny of the map of Africa resembles a gun pointing southwards, downwards, from wherever the African gun is loaded, either you load it from the top in the Mediterranean, in Tripoli, or you load the gun, Africa, from the south, from Cape in South Africa. The Nigeria's geostrategic location makes it symbolically the trigger of Africa. Once again, I thank you. You want to cross-examine me? <laughs> I hope I'll pass. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Obishkin. Uh, now, if you have a question, please uh, step down into the aisle, indicate your desire to uh, speak, and while you sort yourselves out, come, come down. Um, Good evening. My name is uh, Abdul Aziz Ali, and I'm a graduate student in the International Studies uh, Program. Um, I have two distinct questions. One is, uh, more along the lines of how do you think globalization has affected the maintenance of the traditional Nigerian identity? Um, whether you see that you know, the younger generations are having a tougher time learning you know, the language since English is the official language and not the native tongues. Um, my second question is, and this is kind of like just in a, in a regionalization in general, do you think the idea of an African Union, because I believe you said that was the second article of the Constitution to promote African Union, do you think that is physically achievable because from the trend, you see more separatist movements than you really do see unification movements. So realistically, do you think that can be done? Thank you. Thank you. But the first question I didn't get very well, that the globalization versus Nigerian traditional. Um, what effect do you think globalization has had on preserving like Nigerian culture and tradition? Oh, okay. I, that's, I should have thought about it before I said oh, it. I'm sorry. Okay. That's good. You want me to answer them now? Yes. OK. Thank you very much. I'll try. So help me God. The more difficult. <laughs> well, I know you have uh, uh, quite an array of uh, intelligent uh, scholars here. Uh, so help me God. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's already an answer. <laughs> Globalization versus Nigerian traditional culture. As I said, Africa had been globalized long ago when our sisters and brothers were shipped all over the world. So we are used to it. We started globalization involuntarily. So globalization, what does it mean? The world becoming one. You see, reading Professor Bech, is it Bechevich? You know, uh, it's interesting. Globalization, I think, has a lot of advantages. And you know that you can learn Arabic now through the internet. These are very interesting advantages you can take of globalization. The world is becoming one. And I think uh, your generation is luckier. In my novel, I wrote something about my time. In the early 60s in Nigeria, in my hometown, Ilefe, which was the fifth biggest city in Nigeria, there were only four telephone sets. The first one belonged to the king, the owner of Ife who became the governor general of Nigeria. The second one belonged to my uncle, who was the pastor and general overseers of the Christ Apostolic Church. The third one belonged to the general manager of the cooperative society. And whenever you wanted to die, you have to pass through a receptionist who was trained as a telephone operator. And you will have to shout. After you've shouted on top of your voices, they will say, please speak louder. You don't have to pass through that anymore. 
At the time, I found out that there were about uh, 12 telephone sets in my own house alone. <laughs> because all my children insisted that they were, I've only four children. But as an African elders, you, have, you often have your sister, cousins, children staying with you. Because we, are, we relish living together. That's the African humanism. We, 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 we value human beings more than money. And this is a lesson I believe the world must begin to learn. So you know, globalization is affecting others, no doubt. Some of our children cannot speak our language because their neighbors they don't speak. And it's environment that affects you most. If you take a Nigerian to Cairo, he will behave like a Cairo boy. I've always said that you bring somebody from Manhattan, take him to the slums of Nigeria, let him live there, a small child, he will behave like somebody from the slums. So the skin has no influence. You know, I'm colorblind when it comes to the skin. As a spiritual person, I found out that you pray for an Indian, he suffers from the same spiritual thing. He, he behaves and manifests exactly. I've done that in India, in England, everywhere. You know, souls have no color, and demons are international. <laughs> the younger ones, they have to take advantage. This is the realities of our world. The idea of African Union is quite achievable. Why not? We're already achieving it. It is easier to move already within Africa. The separatists, you should understand them. Some of them, like in my part of Nigeria, like the Niger Delta, we realized there have been mistakes. Oil was discovered in Nigeria in 1957. That's the year I was born, for information, at Oloibiri, 52 years ago. But nobody thought of ever doing anything to put back what they took from Mother Earth. So Mother Earth is complaining. The children of that place, they are complaining. But the federal government of Nigeria has realized this. That's why they call them for the first time. They are talking to them, and they are doing things there. And that's why almost every month now, the Nigerian government invites the people of Niger Delta, they dialogue what is being done in your place, what has not been done well. You see, this, I believe, is part of The separatists are just saying, not that we want to go, we want more. Share the cake. Let the cake reach us more. The separatists don't want to go. No, nobody wants to go. The bigger, the better. That's what it is. Nobody wants to go away. What are you going to do? What are you going to? We had a civil war in 1967, Let me tell you, no, no, nobody wants to go away again. No. The separatists you are hearing, they don't want to go away. They want more of the oil wealth. And that's what we are talking about. It's about sharing, not tearing. Good evening. My name is Ramatu Musa. And my question is, beside, um, apart from a career perspective, why was it so important that you learned so many languages? Oh, many languages. Why is it important? Yes, why was it so important for you? Oh, well, there are many reasons. The first reason is love them, natural. My father spoke Latin. I was fascinated. I said, who are the people who spoke Latin? The second one is that uh, from religious point of view, languages are very important. You know, if you read any of the scriptures, any of the big books, either you're a Muslim or a Christian, the Muslims insist that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, I'm not a Muslim and a Christian, but I respect them. They say that the language that God understands and which he couched the Quran is a classical Arabic. You see, a language, lingua, linguos, is from the tongue. And you know, the most important thing, you will never know from where I come until I speak. Once I speak, then you begin to Classify me. Oh, this one has an accent. <laughs> like my friend. He came here to serve. And say, oh, hello, hello. He wanted to buy some sweets. 
candy. 